Gungrave, a third-person run-in gun game on the PlayStation 2 that's memorable for its unique artistic style and for its gunslinging action. Mowing the enemies one by one with a barrage of bullets, launching a ton of missiles at the enemy, and those stylish specialty moves right at the end of every boss's last few drops of HP. It's just really satisfying to watch it all at the end. This what makes Gungrave to be known back in the days. Although, it's a bit of a mixed feeling for me on revisiting this good old classic PlayStation 2 game. Well, to be honest, it's more of a disappointment for me, unfortunately. Not only just because of the whole camera control setup, but how unpolished the game actually is. This is K1PM, and this time I'll be doing a full review of Gungrave. Gonna be more in depth on the game, looking at every aspect of it, and pointing out the pros and the cons of it. Gungrave was developed by Red Entertainment, a game studio that I'm not quite familiar with. The only game that I know that they've developed was Thousand Arms, and that's it. Aside from that, the game was released during at these separate dates. First in Japan, then North America, and later on Europe. With the help of Yasuhiro Naito, the same writer and manga artist of Trigun, the game essentially have a unique character that goes by the name Grave. The whole plot of the game is more of a revenge kind of thing. The main character, Brandon Heath or known as Grave in the game, ends up protecting the daughter of Big Daddy in a mafia-like family. After seeing her at the front door of their hideout, injured, Grave immediately had the motivation of getting his revenge against the syndicate. Grave took the step of hunting down each of the top members in the family, fighting off against several minions along the way and their demon-like modified bodies. As much as I appreciate the plot and the story of the game with the whole mafia-like kind of theme, the story feels a bit too short on the other end. Some parts of the story weren't exactly explained that well like the relation of Grave with Big Daddy and Mika's mother. The only way possible to know is by watching the animated series of it before, which is already outside of the game. And this happens all because of how short the game is. I know and I understand that these kind of games are meant to be short. It's more of a arcade kind of game, right? Kinda like how Metal Slug series are. But in Gungrave's case, it just feels like there's a lot of things that we're missing in the game, that it ends up feeling like a short game in the end. It's not as fulfilling as to compare how other games of the same genre can be. When it comes to the gameplay though, I gotta love how Gungrave's idea for it. Crashing into a place and go guns blazing throughout the whole stage, eliminating every enemy in sight and destroying a lot of destructible stuffs around for that combo meter to charge up my special, while having four different specials available in the game, although it kinda seems useless on the other two specials once I unlock the other last two specials in the end. It's a simple premise of a run and gun arcade kind of game, but this time on a 3D environment with a heavily focus on its unique style and flair of the game. And after completing a stage, the game would move on to a resting area where I could interact with the side characters that gives out an alright dialogue that kept me interested with the story. It's more of a short break in between stages, which is actually alright to see, although it kind of felt like they missed up some opportunities they could've added here, like some modifications with the weapons or something. The concept of the game works really well, although there's three huge problems that are within the game. The awful camera controls, the tight level design, and how bad the AI can be. For a third-person game made for the PS2, it feels really weird that the game doesn't have a camera control for the right analog stick on the PlayStation 2. Having to rely heavily on the movements of the character to adjust the camera and spamming that lock-on target towards the enemy. The controls should have been alright on the older consoles, but for a game on the PlayStation 2, it's just awful. Especially considering this is a third-person type of game, enemies would be swarming around the player at every side, making it really hard to detect the enemy from behind. A lot of different games made full use of the dual analog stick controls. Why can't Gungrave do the same thing? There's not even a sensitivity controls for the movement. Although the controls seem manageable at least, 
with that kind of setup when getting used to it. But then again, there are still a lot of cases where it ends up being a problem though. You don't exactly put enemies behind doors a lot of times. Considering how bad the camera controls are, this ends up becoming a problem for me, especially when I end up playing the game at the highest difficulty. I have to redo and memorize the enemy's spawn points just to avoid getting damaged that much out of it. But the normal version of the game is really easy though. It's more of a baby mode if I'd best describe it. I'm not exaggerating though. Considering the damage the enemy could deal is really low. The level design itself is a bit of a mix for me. There are some decent stages like the first area, the train stage, and the fancy party crash thing. Though in some places, just seem a bit too bland or too simple. To make things worse is how bad the enemy AI can be in the game. The AI within the game just feels too simple that bothered me a bit about it. You can see how the enemy would just stand there and tries to shoot me even though I'm outside its range. And how most of the enemies in the game wouldn't even take cover, making the game easy to beat. Even when I'm playing the game at the highest difficulty, kick ass. The enemy are still that dumb, unfortunately. You could argue that it's a run and gun kind of game. It doesn't matter that much. But it kinda ruins the immersion and the difficulty of it in the end, right? Not to mention how anticlimactic some of the boss can be. Namely, the first and the second stages in the game. The rest, however, is pretty much alright. Especially that boss fight against Bungie at the cathedral. I was surprised how he ends up having the same kind of special as Grave, but ends up using it on me instead. The last two bosses, however, just seem really crazy. I mean, what the heck is this? I didn't remember any of this crazy stuff around, although I guess it's alright. Kinda a bit hard to beat them up considering how small the stage is. Putting aside the negative things of the game, the soundtrack however is pretty decent. It's just a shame how the game's soundtrack isn't that well known, considering how the loud sound effects are everywhere within stages. Just seem a bit too much to bear. Again, it's a run and gun kind of game, right? It seemed pretty normal when I think about it, right? Well, Metal Slug series managed to balance it pretty well. That made me remember most of the soundtracks even until now. It's just kinda sad on Gungrave's case though. There is a sound option that I could adjust the volume that ends up fixing the problem. Although every time when I went back at the base, that annoying radio would end up overpowering the sounds of their voices. It kinda just ends up ruining the story dialogue for me. Whoever is in charge of it should've done it more seriously. The extra gallery however is pretty decent, I actually really like it. Seeing every character models in there in a covered action figure like setup is actually nice to see. It's a nice aesthetic idea on what they did here. Although within the cinematic section, it kind of feels weird that they have this one video in here. I'm not exactly sure why they have this footage of it, but if you happen to know why it's here, please do tell me about it. I'm kind of really curious about it, what's going on here. That's why I give this game a rating of 7.5 out of 10. As much as I love the style it follows, the cutscenes of the story, the soundtrack, and the main character's overall design, along with its gunslinging action, that overall quality of the game just seem a bit lacking in a way. It kind of feels like the ones I just mentioned are the only redeeming factors of the game. The awful controls, the short and bad level design, and that awful enemy AI just ends up ruining the experience for me. You know, I really wanted to give this game a chance, especially since this is one of my childhood favorites. But in the end, I guess nostalgia kind of let me down this time. Gungrave could have learned a lot from the whole Metal Slug series, but the developers in charge on the level design and the technical side of the game just did their part the worst. Do I still recommend you on playing the game? Nah, I suggest just give up on this one. The controls can be really frustrating for a lot of people. It might just turn you off that badly. And especially how short the game is. You could try playing the game Gungrave Overdose on the PS2. It kinda looks like it's much more polisher there. For more videos such as these, why not head down to my channel to check things out? I do accurate game reviews of the past games and some other new ones too. 
If you want to support my channel, a subscribe would be nice. It kind of helps me out morally, to be honest. This is K1PM, and I bid you farewell.